Hello. Good day. My name is Delia Imbo. Welcome to another edition <coughs> of Imbo Desktop Platform Facebook Live from Three Team Best Trade Academy. We'll continue from where we stop discussing starting a managing a sport business. And today we are looking at part 83. Remember, we are looking at the solutions to export business challenges. Solutions to export business challenges. The last we discussed was the payment. And this evening I'll be looking at people. Remember the problems, product, paperwork, payment, people, port, packaging, profit, processing, promotion and purchase order. And all these are problems, challenges that individuals face in the course of trying to export their product out of Nigeria. And not just in Nigeria, actually in other parts of the world, actually. People. Now, one of the major challenges you will face for export business in Nigeria is issue of quality. But do you know that a number of the commodity, the quality of those commodity, a number of them, the issue you have with the quality is actually because of the people. The people. What do I mean by the people? The people are the ones that actually adulterate the product and makes it difficult from time to get the right quality in Nigeria. The people. It's most unfortunate, but you know what? These do happen. It's most unfortunate, but it does happen. That people are going to reduce the quality of the product. You know, when you are doing commodity, one thing you must realize when you are dealing with commodity is that for commodity in Nigeria, one of the major challenge of commodity is that It's a Greek commodity, so it has some things inside. Typically, sand, some dirt. So a typical agro commodity requires some level of cleaning. A typical agro commodity requires some level of cleaning. If those cleaning are not done, what typically will happen is that you find yourself, you find a situation in which the quality of the product will then be declared to be lower if the cleaning were not done. If the cleaning were not done. So cleaning has to be done for the product to be eligible for export. In fact, there, are, there is a whole value chain, sector in the, in the value chain, that focus only on cleaning. For example, for sesame seed, cleaning it. For um, sorghum, cleaning it. For guinea corn, cleaning it. Just removing the dirt and the sand from it. Why? Because of the fact that a number of those products tends to have issues with the quality of cleaning. A number of those products tends to have issue with the quality of cleaning, it's quality of the product, and that can be made right by cleaning. So cleaning becomes very important. Cleaning becomes very essential. Cleaning becomes very, very, very necessary. Why? If the cleaning is not done and those debt removed, admixtures, impurities are what reduce the quality of agro commodity when you say an agro commodity price i mean quality is low most of the time is the quality in terms of the cleanliness the cleaner they are the better their quality the cleaner they are the better their quality almost every agri commodity we have this problem so you know what some people do now when people are buying agro commodity also it's a game of weight it's a game of weight in the sense that people are going to buy based on the weight people are going to buy based on the weight people are going to buy based on the weight the weight of the product so 
the middleman, I'm not sure this is the farmer, the middleman, or probably the farmer, we add sand to it. They put sand inside. They add sand to the commodity. And by adding sand to the commodity, you know what that does? That drops the quality of that product. By adding sand to the commodity, it drops the quality of the product. So in our station where the quality of the product is low, because it is full of sand. If I say when the quality is low, because it is full of sand. So let me give you an example. If you are buying sesame seed, guinecorn, sorghum, any product with small, small, small seed, Before you buy, if you are buying on the field, if you go to the field, because some people will, will go to the field directly, if you want to buy, before you pay, there is this stuff, it's round like this. I'm trying to see if I can get anything to show you. It's round, it looks like cone. You know, if you look at this now, can you see how this is? Assuming this place is sharp, like sharp, very sharp mount. It will be sharp, but pointed, but it will have hole inside. So it's like it's folded. The way it's folded, everyone is like this. But towards the end, is it it is it, like a cone. It reduces and goes down like that. Uh, I don't know how to show. I don't have anything to show that yet. Now immediately that happened, the cone, the mouth is sharp. For those of us, if you grew up, when I was growing up, I my mom sells uh, what's the name, food for stuffs. So we go with him, we had to market to get some of, to buy some of those things and bring them home. And I remember then to check the quality of the, of the rice. This is what they use. So if you've been to where they sell rice, you see this cone-like stuff, metal, round. It has a sharp mouth. In that sharp end, there is hole there. There is a um, um, hole there, such that if you puncture the rice, that mouth is sharp enough to puncture, but it's also open such that the content of what you are puncturing will enter inside the cone. So when they bring it out, they put it on their hands and they can see. So you can do it. This is what you can use to check the quality of sesame seed or sorghum or guinea corn. And then you rub it on your palm. When you rub it on your palm and pour it out, if it has sand, you will see the sand settling on your hand. Immediately you see that you know that this sesame seed is unclean. <laughs> Really see that it says something unclean. Now, that way, crudely on the field, you can check the purity and cleanliness of a commodity. Sorry. Crudely on the field, you can check the cleanliness of the commodity. And then you can then take a decision if it's worth buying. <laughs> you can then take a decision if it's worth buying. Why? Because now you know the cleanliness. Then you can decide if it's something you still want to buy. Now that you know it is not clean. So if you do that now, it is also very wise. When you want to do it, you know, if you have a bag. Let's assume this is a bag. The bag has sides, like four sides. Uh, what can I use? Okay, let me use this T. So it has four sides. Let's have this a bag. There's a side, 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 side. So if you are if you are going to check the quality, you punch up, up, middle, down, up, middle, down, up, middle, down, and up, middle, down. And you are doing that for all of them. Why? All the sides. So that wherever the impurities are, you can spot it. So when you do that, you now put it up and rub all of them on your palm. You will see sand if it's dirty. You will not see sand if it's not dirty. So it's easy, very easy to know if your product is if the product is clean. If it's not clean, then they will now take it to a factory that clean commodity. A factory that clean commodity, clean commodity like. Sesame seed. You can keep commodity like corn, like uh, guinea corn, 
like sorghum, probably also beans, but it can clean depending and it can be adjusted. The seed can be adjusted for different sizes. I think they change the seed from time to time depending on the nature of what you are trying to clean. So you can remove all the dust and the dust from it. When this is done, sesame seed is now clean enough, ready for export. But like I said, the problem here is the people. People are the one that lower the quality. 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 How they lower the quality? By putting those deaths inside. Why do they put those deaths inside? Because the export of this product is a game of number. The more you put inside, the better it is. More debt. The higher the weight, and the more they get. But you will be busy buying, <laughs> buying sand and buying debt. Now, the next one is legally legal fees. Legally legal fees. I call legally legal fees because these are fees you pay in the cost of export in Nigeria. If you don't pay it, it's like you have committed a sacrilege. But when you pay it, it's actually unreceptive. If you don't pay it, it's like you have committed a sin, a, a big sin. But if you say it, if you pay it, they won't give you a receipt because it's, it's not legal. So I call it legally illegal fees. When you pay a for a your agent money, they will always factor this money into it. And they will tell you that as the document pass through the table of different government agencies, they we have to pay, they will drop money for them to sign off for export clearance. And so they charge you as an exporter because they already are going to pay these charges to the um, exporter. <laughs> they already are going to pay these charges. <laughs> so I call it legally legal fees. Legally legal fees. But to fix this second problem, for the first problem of lower quality, I've told you what told you what to do. To fix the problem, CBN have come up with a solution, and CBN have decided that it's going to automate the export process in Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria, Governor Wefili, recently announced that the CBN is almost set to launch a trade monitoring system in October 2019. This was an article I wrote this week and released. You can find it on my blog, so I'll just read it out to you to let you see some of the challenges and the solution to them. The solution that CBN has brought to the table. And this can significantly curb the legal illegal fees reasonably, but probably not completely. Because import was automated and today people are having issue. And story is that they, 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 some of these agencies have developed a system to be able to extort people. It's very unfortunate, but that's what happened in our country. A lot of importers are having big issues, big issues with the agency that's supposed to help them process their power, their document. And there are insinuation that if you don't pay certain amount, this document will not be posted, processed. That is most unfortunate, but sincerely, that is the reality of our time. That is most unfortunate, but sincerely, that is the reality of our time. All right. Um, this is an automated system that is designed to reduce the length of time required to process export document from about one week to just one day. This is a system designed by the government to improve the processes involved in shipping goods and services out of Nigeria. And this is a much awaited initiative and innovation of the government of Nigeria, which have been delayed for long. Many people in the sector have been clamoring for the need to automate the export process in Nigeria in order to ensure that the timeline required for processing of documentation is significantly reduced. And sincerely, it's with joy in my heart and with so much excitement, I'm saying kudos to CBN for making this a reality, hopefully in October. Another value of the TRMS, the TRMS is the Trade Monitoring System. Is in, the TRMS is in fact 
is the fact, sorry, the value, another value of time is the fact that it will likely correct the discrepancy seen in export data reported by different agencies of government in Nigeria. For example, the data you get from principal inspection again like Cobalt is different from CBN, and CBN also sometimes is different from the one from the National Bureau of Statistics. This distortion in the data is as a result of uncoordinated way in which the data are data is collected, uh, collected and collated without any thorough monitoring. This is why the launching of the TRMS is extremely important. But I would like to say something that is better for CBN to know that there are reasons why people, why this data, why some export data are not captured, why the data seem to be lopsided and distorted. This is because some foreigners are sent into Nigeria to export product to the, as a foreign representative to the manufacturing company. There are other categories of people who export products out of Nigeria to clean illicit funds, trade-based money laundering. And there are some type of people who export money, document of, uh, good out of Nigeria and will not do documentation because they don't want to pay tax. So first people, they want to ship out, they don't want to register a company because they are not here to register a company, they are here to buy product. Second people, they don't want to pay tax. Third people, they are just uh, criminals who want to watch the dirty money they've acquired. And they want to wash it clean using trade transaction. It is also interesting to know that no product will leave Nigeria, the shore of Nigeria, especially containerized items, without passing through the Nigerian Customs Service. So the question is, is Nigerian Customs Service aiding and abetting the export of products without documentation? If customs must see every good living, and good and living without document, should we conclude that customs is aiding the good living Nigeria without document? Because I don't know which other conclusion we have to draw from that. This TRMS will, will, enable, will be able to help the, uh, to better answer the, that question if eventually NCS will have to see the uh, NXP for any transaction. We, if eventually Nigeria Conservative will have to see that the NSD for any transaction is registered on TRMS before they approve and such transaction, before they approve such transaction for loading on the ship for exportation. If at the end of the day, Custom, we have to be checking TRMS and be sure that okay, this good is actually registered with cost, uh, registered or officially or legally for export because it has applied using the application form. Then it becomes easier to be able to export good out of Nigeria uh, and it's been monitored. The custom now will be able to see it and custom will authorize that it be loaded on the ship and maybe we can reduce the legal legal fees. When CBN issued the policy on NXP number, the NSP number must be stated on the bill of lading. It was as if that would be the solution to ensuring that every export of Nigeria would be documented. But alas, the exported, uh, the exporters circumvented this. What has happened was that exporters just simply concord their own NSP numbers and they give it to the shipping line to put it on the bill of lading with the CBN, uh, in line with the CBN regulation. But you know what? Shipping line should not supposed to call, it's not supposed to collect that number from export. It's collected from custom. Because customs supposed to have seen their NXP, but they give it to the shipping line. Shipping line just use it directly. If the shipping line is made to insist that they that is made to insist that they get the actual NSP document or copies of it from custom to extract the NSP themselves, this would have caught the menace of undocumented export. But CBN regulation was not thought through. And therefore, they don't envisage these child practices and make and make uh, and hence make no provision, make no provision rather to prevent it. And hence, there was no provision made to prevent it. Now, the beauty of TRMS is that it will, if necessary, for shipping line to be able to have access to this portal to be able to check the detail of transaction themselves after custom approval in order to pick the NSP number directly and insert on the bill of lading. This will mean that after custom have approved the good for shipment, the shipping line should be able to spot the transaction on TRMS to obtain the NSP number from the uh, NSP number from the um, application 
and put it for an application form and put it on the bill of lading. If this becomes the case in the export session in Nigeria, it is going to get the export clearance in Nigeria. It will significantly prevent export of product out of Nigeria without documentation. So I'm just basically saying that CBN has come with this initiative. It's lovely. It's fantastic. It's great. It's a commendable initiative. But that initiative will not achieve its objective if CBN do not do the needful. And in this, in this wise, the needful is that CBN ensure that the customs is not just the one that determine uh, that given SP number to the shipping line. Shipping line should be able to see it on the TRMS and pick it up there themselves and put it on their bill of lading. All right. So that will help us be able to solve the problem of legally legal fees because then there will be less interface with any government agency. And if there are less interface any, any government agency, then there will be less interface in exchange of, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> Today I'll be looking at the fourth principle. It's called the principle of vision, the law of vision. That's what we're looking at today, the law of vision. Remember, I've looked at the law of gestation. I'm looking at how to solve export business problem. And I'm looking at it, looking at the problem on one hand, and looking at principles on the other hand. Experience is peculiar, principles are universal. Experience is peculiar, principles are universal. Experience is peculiar. Principles are universal. You only become what you can see in your future. You can only feature in the future you have pictured. You can only feature in the future you have pictured. You cannot feature in the future you have not pictured. You cannot feature in the future. You have not pictured. Everything created on the earth is created twice. First in the mind of someone before it becomes a reality on the earth. First in the mind of someone before it became a reality on the earth. And this is so important and so critical. It's first in the, uh, in the mind and then it becomes reality. When you see a house, that house was first created in the mind of the architect. That house was first created in the mind of the architect. After the creative process in the mind of the architect, then that house, after the creative process in the mind of the architect, you know what happened afterwards? After the creative process in the mind of the architect, the architect is able to put it down. And then the engineer can begin work and put up the structure we are talking about, or we are looking for. If you want to create a great business, a great export business, there is need for you to have a picture of the export business you are looking for. There is need for you to have a very good mental picture of the future of the export business you are looking at. There's need for you to be able to have a mental picture of the future of the business you are looking at. A mental picture of the future you are looking at become extremely important. You know why? If it is not important, if it's not done rather, if you don't have a mental picture, you cannot create it. So that means every effort to create anything great, anything grand, we be groping in the dark. We be we be tantamount to groping in the dark. If I do not do what I am supposed to do, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to ensure that at the end of the day, I have the right vision. If I don't have the right vision, I'll be groping in the dark. I, I would just, oh, this is what's happening now. Oh, this is what they are exporting now. Oh, I, anything that come up, I will just be part of it. Why? No vision. No vision. No vision. This is one of the biggest problems that people face in trying to go into export business. When there is no vision. And because there is no vision, the challenge is that at the end of the day, it becomes difficult to make that desired progress. In fact, vision makes you to grow faster, further, and far. It increases your speed. 
It aids your arrival at destination. It aids your movement because you can see far well ahead of time. Because you can see far well ahead of time. Because you can see far well ahead of time. A mental picture in your mind makes it a reality. So don't start a business without having an idea of the future of the business you want to build. Don't start a business without having an idea of the future of the business you want to build. Having a mental picture of the future of the business is so critical and so important because that's what is that means if the business will try. The mortality rate of business in Nigeria is high. The mortality rate of export business is a lot, lot higher. If mortality of business in Nigeria, for example, is maybe five out of 10 at the end of maybe five years. For export business, most likely to be one or two out of 10 in that same period. Why? Because of the challenge. Because of the challenge of the SME in properly understanding the business they want to go into and eventually getting the best out of that business. So remember the law of vision, it says, you cannot feature in the future, you are not pictured. Everything is created twice. You first see it in your mind and then bring it to reality. You first see it in your mind and then bring it to reality. Thank you very much for listening to me again today. This is the Import Export Platform, Facebook Live from Trees Media Academy. My name is Dele Ayimibo, and this is part 83 of the Staten and Managing Export Business. Like I said, most likely we'll end up at 100 or 100 plus. We've been on this journey for since beginning of May, and we have finished May, we have finished June, and we'll likely continue in July. <laughs> We'll likely continue in July. Thank you very much for listening. You can see this video on our YouTube channel, 3T Impex. Please remember, YouTube channel, 3T Impex TV. Like the video, share the video, click the notification button to get notification when we post a new video. Share with your friends and relatives and friends that are looking to export business. More importantly, remember to like the video and drop your comment. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.